Okay, I'm going to switch to English again for my presentation and I'm going to talk about phytomining. So, how we could use plants to recover metals from waste. So, what happens actually to our waste? If you look at these numbers, you see how much waste is generated in Austria and other European countries and how this waste is treated. In Austria, the most important form of waste, municipal waste treatment is incineration. So our waste is burned. And also in a lot of Western European countries, it's also a common treatment. So if waste is burned, you can on the one hand recover heat and electricity from the burning process, but in the end you end up with waste incineration residues, which are again waste that in Austria is landfilled. So these waste incineration residues, they consist mainly of bottom ash, so 80% of what is left after the incineration is bottom ash, and 10% each is scrap metal that can be recovered, and fly ash. And in this way, um, 590,000 tons of bottom ash were landfilled in Austria in 2015. So in my work, I proposed an alternative use of this bottom ash, which could be phytomining. And for that, um, I created a substrate, selected um, appropriate plants, and in the best case, in the end, you would end up with a product. So if you look at these plants, um, they are very special, they are very specific. Um, they grow on heavy metal contaminated or uh, naturally enriched um, soils and they can actually accumulate metals in their shoots. Um, if a plant is growing on a metal contaminated soil, there are different strategies a plant could follow. Most of the plants are excluders, so they can grow, but they are not going to take up um, the metal that is in the soil. And there is only a small fraction of plants that actually accumulate much more, higher concentrations of heavy metals compared to the soil. And these plants are hyperaccumulators. And there are around 500 species that have been described, and most of them are hyperaccumulators for nickel. And the definition of a nickel hyperaccumulator is a plant that accumulates more than 1,000 milligrams of nickel in the shoots. Also hyperaccumulators for zinc and other elements have been described. So what is so special about this plant, uh, about hyperaccumulator plants, is that they not only take up heavy metals, but they also transport it to the shoots. So you have shoots that are high in, for example, nickel, and these shoots you can harvest and use um, to recover nickel from these plants, which would be phytomining, so the commercial use of a plant extracted metal. And in um, Albania, there have been the first um, field trials with nickel hyperaccumulators for phytomining, and right now there are also projects, there's a project going on in the European Union, and also in Austria, there is actively, there are experiments going on um, for phytomining, in Burgenland, where there are patches of soils that are very rich in nickel. And on these soils, um, different, two different hyperaccumulators were growing. And you see on these numbers of what these plants are capable of, they can accumulate more than 1% of their shoot biomass in nickel. And in the best case, you could end up with a yield of around 46, 48 kilos of nickel per hectare. In my work, I wanted to combine this phytomining and hyperaccumulators with bottom ash. So I collected different bottom ash um, materials, I characterized them, um, I built a substrate for plants, and I tested different plants for phytomining. <clears throat> so I went to Vienna's waste incineration um, plants and collected um, materials from Hesedas waste incineration and bottom ash from municipal solid waste incineration. The first thing um, we did was to character characterize the substrates for the metal content. And you see here that this waste is actually a valuable source of a lot of um, valuable metals, like zinc, copper, manganese, or nickel. Um, but currently, this material is not used at all and is just put on a landfill. But for um, plant growth, it was evident that this material is 
not really suitable for plant growth since it has a very high pH, um, a high um, concentration of salts that can disturb the plant growth, and almost no, or, or no organic material. So we adjusted all these characteristics in order to come up with a proper substrate for plant growth. And we were growing different hyperaccumulating plants, two hyperaccumulating plants for nickel and for zinc, and other metal tolerant um, secondary accumulators. And to show you some results of my work, um, concerning the nickel accumulation um, on this substrate, you see that the plants, they had very low nickel concentrations, except for the nickel hyperaccumulator that actually accumulated more than two, 250 milligrams of nickel per kilo of biomass, which is high, but it's still way below the potential this plant actually has. Same was true for the zinc accumulation, also in the hyperaccumulator. Um, the zinc concentration was higher than um, one gram of zinc per kilo of biomass, but still the accumulation potential of these plants could not be reached. So you see that there are still um, a lot of challenges to face. Um, the plants, the hyperaccumulator plants, they have a higher potential, but the, the substrate still needs some adjustment in order to really increase um, the metal accumulation in the plants. And this work is also important, an important basis for phytomining research and other um, metal-rich substrates. So I thank you a lot for your attention. Um, and if you are further interested in phytomining, there is, as I said, there is a European project. Um, you can check it out online. It's called Agromine. And there you can also get information about the experiments we're doing in Austria. Thanks. Thanks.